Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to speak at this side event, and I'm delighted to share a few thoughts with you. I'd like to thank IDDRI, the SDSN, and BioVision for giving me this opportunity to speak. Colleagues, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development represents an extraordinary opportunity for building a world that is free from hunger and all forms of malnutrition. The Sustainable Development Goals and the COP21 Climate Agreement show the ways through which this vision can be achieved. It requires a deep transformation of agriculture and food systems so that they are inclusive, sustainable and climate compatible. Through these pathways, the ending of hunger and malnutrition is not only possible, but it will also contribute to ending rural poverty, to tackling climate change and to the sustainable management of natural resources. And indeed, leaving no one behind will not be possible without a sustainable rural transformation that increases the incomes and productivity of small and family farmers while creating in-farm and off-farm decent jobs as well as resilient livelihoods, especially for women and young people. These are the ways in which the second Sustainable Development Goal serves as the entry point to the full tapestry of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, generating multiple synergies. Dear colleagues, achieving the second Sustainable Development Goal requires a global enabling environment that allows country-led efforts to achieve results at the local level. And if we look at the global level, all countries will need to transform their policies so that they support the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals by one and by all. Policy coherence with global sustainable development is an essential element. The Committee on World Food Security shows how building policy convergence at the global level can be achieved in an inclusive manner. But to be transformative, national pathways need to be country-owned, inclusive and adapted to subnational and local contexts. And indeed, countries that are succeeding have shown that the policies and programs that work are those which integrate. That means small-scale agriculture coming together with markets and safety nets. It means food systems, healthy diets and nutrition. It means women's empowerment. It means agriculture, forestry and climate action adaptation and mitigation practices, and rural and urban systems. And as well as integration, success also requires participatory and inclusive ways of governance, as well as ways of working within governments that break down sectoral silos at all levels. These kinds of successes work when there is mutual accountability and trust, when there is partnership among different actors, and when all these emerge in concrete projects within specific territories and inside defined value chains. And so sustainability and inclusiveness need to be built at the local level. Diversified economies, rural-urban networks, 
integrated landscapes and ecosystems being rooted in territories and among their peoples. And indeed, it's the people working in this way who become the key actors of sustainable development. Dear colleagues, I'm so pleased that we can learn from initiatives such as the ones you'll be discussing today. Both the second sustainable development and all the sustainable development can be achieved, but to do so, we've got to make sure that we partner together so that we can work for nourishment of people, nurturing the planet, growing prosperity and harvesting peace. Thank you so much for the chance to talk with you today.